Well, for more on today's trade, Ian Crookshanks from Nedbank Capital joins me in the studio. Hi, Ian. Hello, David. Good it's, to be with you. It's been quiet. Uh, we've only had a couple of reports in the last couple of days of companies reporting. So why don't we move off the listed sector, but to a company which has an effect on every company in the listed sector, which is Eskom. And they've put out their notes, uh, their results. We, we uh, noted it in uh, the, the news headlines there. I mean, the ballpark figures here, 16 billion uh, uh, was their profit on operations before costs and tax uh, from 16 billion from the year for the year 2011 up to 22 billion uh, for March 2012. So these are always big numbers for Eskom. Yes. Of course, the question one asks is: Is this good or bad? Um, because those numbers are so big, and I also have a question also whether they should be talking about profit at all. Yes, being, uh, <laughs> took the question out my mouth. Not David. for shareholders. No. But first of all, let's say: Is Eskom doing well at the moment? Before we talk about how they define things, I think the strategy is right. They are concentrating on development. You know, there is such a thin margin between uh, maximum production and likely maximum demand. I mean, it, it's a few percent. It is that close. I think I saw some numbers, we heard some numbers the other day saying when we are at, at the day of maximum consumption and there was literally, you know, a, a couple of extra heaters yes, would have you, tripped the country. If you and, and I had switched our geezers off, we'd be okay. That's right, yes. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm still concerned about that profit number. Yes. You know, uh, this, as, as a state-owned enterprise, should it be run for profit or should any additional revenue be put back into capital expenditure right exactly. away and then we the consumers shouldn't be socked to the same extent well, that that I think is yeah. a very important consideration and tomorrow when Brian Darmus does his presentation to the analysts I'm going to ask exactly that question I'm it's so important glad. to know I'm yes. so glad I've been Thanks. saying for some time that Transnet and Eskom should not be thinking about profit no and it's not just words because if you think you are a company which reports to a shareholder yes. which in theory gets dividends uh, and shareholder yes. value you will be driven to make a profit yes. as opposed to be driven to keep the stockpile in place. Yes. I mean, if the managers are rewarded for making a profit, Transnet or Eskom, well, then that may become more important than keeping the lights on. And yes. I think that's what happened in, in the mid 2000s. That, that's right. And so there is an alternative. Instead of driven by profit, why not just be driven by unit production cost? Mm. But that's real. That's, that's what they do. That's right. So, Instead of profit, they should talk about surplus, yes. and we would then assume that the surplus would be reinvested oh, so yeah. they can keep their, uh, in their uh, price increases as low as possible. Yes, exactly. I think that would be an important consideration. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Uh, good luck to you tomorrow when you ask the <laughs> okay. question at the presentation. Now, what's encouraging for me is that they've spent some 3.3 billion rand on procuring power from uh, other producers, which is very encouraging because there was a time yes. when it appeared they, they just wouldn't. Yes, yes. But I think it's also a question of, you know, they have to have some sort of backup. Once again, the uh, production, the total production ability and potential consumption is so close. They must uh, use other resources if they're available, even if it's at a higher cost than the existing national grid. They must have it there for the protection of industry and commerce in South Africa. Yes. That, that, that safety net. Leaving be. aside the, the numbers for the moment, yes. is the management getting it right in management terms? Well, just looking at the strategic direction, it appears so. Mm. Let's talk about our market now, the yes. listed sector. As I said earlier, when I was looking uh, at about half past four, uh, it, it looked as if there'd no, no shares would be up. But the interesting thing was that the shares that were down, none was by more than a percent. Yes. So, it's a so it's the market's range. just sitting very still. Yes, yes it is. Uh, I think, you know, markets, whether they're equities or currencies or bond markets, to an extent there's a question of euro paralysis. Mm. You know, uh, what's going to happen to the euro? Well, what's going to happen to Greece? Because that's going to be a driving force there. And, uh, and I think that that's very important. And so I think we're going to have more of the same tomorrow as well. Small margins, because nobody wants to open up new positions. You don't want to go short of the market, saying it's too expensive, because, you know, a, a, a pro-democracy in, uh, in, in, in Greece vote maybe unlikely, but if it comes along, then really we'll say, oh, potential for the euro to grow, the, 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 they're not going to try and change the rescue terms, and, and you know, all will be well, all will be better. Yes, yes. Well, at a time like this, surely if uh, you are investing on behalf of people or for yourself, you could say, let's keep a cool head here, yes. and, but buy a very good company or two, which has a good valuation, because down the line, whatever happens in Greece this weekend, good companies are going to grow and uh, maybe because of this market uh, paralysis as you say yes. valuations have become unnatural 
Yeah, look, yes, I think that that is true, uh, but, but we need, you know, I would rather con con cons conserve the cash uh, in the meantime, not, not huge amounts, but, you know, a certain percentage of one's portfolio, whether it be for an individual or an asset management of a fund. Uh, I, I think that that would be the right thing to do because we're now in the unknown area mm. and it's, there's a lot of doubt. And that old JSE saying, when in doubt, stay out, mm. wait and mm. see. Interesting, the retailers, the retail numbers have come out, uh, yes. 1%, uh, I think it was, yes. year on year. Uh, however, the retailers have been doing well, and just today, I mean, it's just one day, but Trueworths and Tiger Brands were both among the better yes. performers uh, on the day. What is your reading of the retail sector? And we've had you know, credit extensions run to nearly where it can go, consumers distressed. State wage bill may not be as high as we assumed it would be because yes. the government appears to be footing its foot down. One hopes that they do because that's very important. That's also going to have an impact on the overall inflation rate because they put up those wages, then all of the administered prices are going to go up as well. Yeah. Uh, and I think consumers are under a lot of pressure. Uh, yes, they may have had a little bit more to spend, but they've had to spend it on much higher electricity charges, on higher higher transport costs um, and the uncertainty of unemployment. Everybody knows somebody who has lost a job and can't find another. Mm. Now that's serious and that has a very slowing down impact on, on spending. But you know on that 1% year on year growth, it's important to say okay from 6% one month to 1% now compared to a year ago, if you take a moving average. 12 months moving average, it's actually stayed fairly constant for the mm. last few months. So I think it's important not to panic just yet. Mm. I think it's a bit too soon to panic. Too soon to panic. Yes. We, uh, final point, we, all, we talk about oil every day. We haven't yes. talked about Cecil for a while. What about Cecil? Well, slightly up on the day and sure. it does tend to track the oil price. Yes, and I think that the oil price has a bit more downside potential over the next few months. Day to day is impossible to predict. And if that is so, if we are moving from a range we saw like 100 to $115 for four months, I think what we may see is that s uh, floor becoming a ceiling for a lower range. And that could go, say, a 90 to $100 mm -hmm. range. Then in that case, there's time on one side before buying Cecil. But it's a must-have in the portfolio. Mm -hmm. Credit Suisse says it might go as low as $50, not too far yeah. in the distant future. Okay. That was Ian Crookshanks from uh, Nedbank Capital.